Okay. Okay. This is the uh, the gate controller. Um, once again, you only use one button, and it's the left hand button. It's the one closest to the light. Um, it's only that button you use. This one actually does nothing. When you press that button once, and if you look at the gate now, the gate will start to open. Uh, Any time you press that button again, it will stop. And if you press the button again, it will close the gate. Okay, so when you're leaving the property, uh, to press that button, obviously when it closes, it will stop. Press that button again, and it'll open right up. Now, the thing you must always remember is that it's not an automatic system, so it doesn't close on, on its own after you've left. When you've pulled out of the gate, you then need to press the button again to close the gate. And that's the same when you come in. So once you've opened the gate to drive in, you need to press the button again to close the gate. We'll close the gate again now. Now, while that's closing, in case of emergency, if the power goes off for any reason, lightning, thunderstorm, whatever, you need to get out, this key here, um, we'll find out where it is in a minute. It's, it's in the head. hanging up on the hooks in, under the notice board in the this kitchen. It's hanging up on the hook under the notice board. Basically, that is the manual override for the gate, which allows you to open the gate. With At the moment, it, it will not open manually. You put the key in there, turn it 90 degrees, this flaps out, and as soon as that's flapped out, it releases the, the gate, so you can actually slide the gate and open it manually. Obviously, then you want to push that back in again, and if the power comes back on, you can close it electrically. But you can open and close this manually, should you need to, with that emergency override key. OK. When you, um, when you come in at night, um, and you want to set the alarm for perimeter, it's this button here, which is the bottom button. Uh, it's a little picture of a house, and what that does is sets all the exterior detectors, uh, so if anybody sort of prowls around the property at night, it'll set the alarm off. Um, make sure that all the doors are shut and everything's ready to go, and then when you press that button, you will hear a beep. Okay, when you press it again to disengage it, you will hear another beep. Right, now if we look at the alarm panel, um, we can just about see it. When I set it... It goes to menu two, which is set for the external perimeter. So, uh, unsetting it again. Make sure you unset it before you go out in the morning. There's a little indicator here, marked called Armado, which I think means armed. Um, and that light will be flickering, will be flashing if the alarm is set. So when you come out in the morning, just double check that that's not flashing. Um, if it is flashing, obviously you unset it. Uh, but if somebody's gone out before you and set it, then obviously you don't want to set it again. Um, so that little light will be flashing. I'll set it and you can see it. There you go, it's flashing, which means the alarm, perimeter alarm is set. So press the button again, and that unsets it. Full set. Full set. Okay. Well, we can't do that because we're no, going to... No, no, but you... What? Well, we, could... we can't show a full set because... No, but you can explain that that's the button for a full set. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, the other... Uh, we're rolling. The other button on this, uh, on this keypad is this one here. There's only two buttons you ever use. This one is for, as I said earlier, for perimeter set when you're in the property. And this one above it is for full set of the alarm. Um, and when you set the alarm, uh, basically you have a 30 second delay to allow you to exit the premises and then you will hear a bleep when the alarm is set. So we'll actually run through that and just go outside and set the alarm and then you can, uh, you can get a feel for what we're talking about. It's lit up. Um, when you set the full alarm, when you leave the property, you need to be standing at least two foot away from the house and then you can set the full alarm. I'm going to press the button now. It'll take about 30 seconds, so we're going to kind of shorten that down a bit. I'll press the button and we'll just wait. There you go. So it's done a little bleep and the red lights come on that and that shows that the alarm is fully set. So that's inside and outside, PIRs inside and the, um, and the external proximity sensors. Uh, to unset it, you press the same button. Show down on the button a minute, Jean. Same button, this one here. As I said, there's two buttons. This button here, where my thumb is, press that button again, and it, you'll hear it bleep twice to show you that you've unset it. 
and there, if you go back up to that, the light has now gone out. Okay, okay this is the uh, air conditioning system for the whole house and also the heating system for winter use. Um, basically, uh, it's, it's very straightforward. It's got a lot of buttons on it, but you don't need to worry about many of them. You've got an on-off button here at the top. Flick that button on, the little red indicator comes on, and the system starts to work. The temperature that you want the system to get down to is displayed here, and at the moment it's set at 17 degrees, and you've got a, 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 two buttons here, a minus and a plus button, either side of what looks like a thermometer, and to increase the temperature you simply take that up, or decrease the temperature you take it down. Normally, uh, overnight the temperature would be sort of set 18, 19 degrees, which is fine. Um, the fans are quite noisy, it's ducted through all the, all the rooms, through little grills and ducts in the corners of the rooms. So you can set the fan on either low speed or high speed. You've got a little L there showing low speed, and this button here switches between low speed and high speed. So if you want to chill the house down quickly, run it on high speed. If you want to chill the house down slowly, run it on low speed, or just keep a sort of keep an ambient chill. Um, that's all you need to worry about on that machine, um, there's nothing else. When you're finished with it, obviously just switch it off. Okay, this, uh, this telephone is, um, is a free UK call phone, um, so any call, any call to a UK landline is free, so you know, please, feel, please feel free to use it. If you use it for calling mobiles or any other number, it can get quite expensive, so I'd appreciate it if you, you didn't do that. But certainly for UK landline calls, um, feel free to do that. When you dial a UK call, because of the way this thing operates on a, on a VoIP system, um, it's best to actually dial the number before you actually open the line. So I'll, I'll show you what I mean. 0 oh, oh, four, four, one, five, oh, three, three, two, six, two, seven, one, eight. For example, once you've dialed the number in, then press the green button to open the line and it will dial the number. You have got a speaker capability here to... to to do that. Okay, and I'll disconnect it. That's that one, but please only use it for UK landline calls um, as it is expensive for mobiles and that sort of stuff. Okay. Okay, we have um, four items attached to the telly. Uh, one is obviously the TV itself and it has its own remote control, Exhibit A. The other one is the Humax digital box. Sky, it's a Sky um, a satellite box and you've got FreeSat on that. Uh, and the other one is the DVD player which is in the cupboard down here, and that operates into one of the HDMI ports on the telly. Um, so first of all, switch the telly on. That will give you TV. This red light on the Humax box underneath means it's actually switched off. So to get any joy on the telly at all, you will need to switch the Humax box on, which is that button there. Um, now, the way I've got this wired at the moment is I've actually got it wired through this amplifier because it just improves the sound quality and a couple of decent speakers at the end. So when you're running the telly, you need the amplifier on or else you'll get no sound. So with the amplifier on there, left hand button, you will now get TV sound with any luck at all, once this thing's lined itself up. This takes a few minutes to boot up actually, but it will be there very shortly. Whatever happens in the Okay. Island, so you can either adjust the TV volume here on the volume control on here. Public win on Sunday. Or uh, the way I've wired it up, you can actually just adjust it by setting the David Bond BBC News. The volume on the TV. Time out for a little bit of weird meter. Okay. Channel changing obviously is done on the Humax box. Because that's the sky box or the satellite box. So that is your channel change, BBC two, BBC channel five, etc. Um, you may find it difficult getting some of the HD channels down here because the signal's not very strong in Spain. So you'll get that no signal or whatever. Um, so that's that bit. The DVD player is directly beneath uh, the signal top of the amplifier. Right, um, on the TV remote control, um, to change it to view the um, DVD, you need to change the HDMI channel. So that is done on here with the input channel, that button there. You hit that and it will come out and tell you what inputs you've got. Uh, HDMI 1, HDMI 2. This one here is the, is the Humax box and HDMI 2 is the DVD player. So if I scan along to that one, hit OK, we're now on the DVD player. OK. Now, you also need to change the stereo amplifier if you want the full stereo kind of surround sound jobby 
to the same thing. Okay, now just to clear this, and you probably can't see this on the video. It's what you do with it that counts. The new iX35 from Hyundai. Inspiration. This is the um, the internet system, which is uh, um, run by a company called Skynet Link. This is the router box, and it's a wireless access point. Um, you can get onto uh, the wireless access point. I think it's called either Skynet or Linksys. I'm not sure. So I think it might be called Linksys. Um, the password for it is Sorby Trigoad. That's S O R B. Is it Sorby Trigoad or Sorby Treetops? Sorby Trigoad, isn't it? It is Sorby Trigoad, which is S O R B I E T R E G O A D. That's the password to get onto the wireless router. If you've got a laptop or anything you need uh, to plug in to, to uh, an Ethernet port, there is an Ethernet cable here. So you can actually put your laptop here, plug the Ethernet cable in, um, and you've got a couple of speakers there that you can plug into the laptop as well. Um, this will come on automatically when you switch all the power back onto the property.